there are some people who pretend to be a loyal and faithful friend. They claim they never would betray your secrets. Well, that's what they say. But if it be a love affair you wish to tell them, take great care. Whatever love you may confide, they're sure to spread it far and wide. Since gossip is the general rule where love's concerned, don't be a fool and share love's secrets. That will lead to misery and distress, that's guaranteed. Each of your lovers will suspect the other, then their love is wrecked. The result is shame and misery. This happened once in Burgundy. A knight once loved the Chatelaine of Vergy. He was the best of men. When he described his burning passion, this youth excited her compassion, and so she made a bold decision to give her love on one condition. All must be done in secrecy. She'd keep it quiet, and so must he. If he was minded to confide, their secret love would be denied. All her favours she'd withdraw and never love him anymore. <laughs> now, because they wanted all discreet, they made a plan how they would meet each day. This youth would come and hide in an orchard right outside his lady's room, and there he'd wait in a most excited state. <laughs> Until he saw her dog appear. That way he'd know the coast was clear. <laughs> Quick as a flash, the lusty boy would race inside and there enjoy the fruits of love. And no one knew of their affair except these two. The knight found favour at the court of Burgundy, as well he ought. He pleased the duke. The duke was glad he could befriend the handsome lad. <laughs> the duchess, too, was wholly smitten. She scarcely kept her passion hidden. But none of this the knight could see, because he loved Madame Vergy. <laughs> so what on earth was he to say? When the duchess spoke to him one day, <laughs> oh, young man, you are of good repute, fine-looking and no doubt astute. Don't you think that you deserve a friend in high places who could serve to put good chances in your way? Does that appeal? What do you say? Madame, that's never crossed my mind. Oh, well, don't delay, or you will find it is too late. That's my advice. Think carefully now. It would be nice to find a friend who loved you dearly, and you loved her. <laughs> you don't speak clearly, madam. <laughs> I really can't see what you mean or what you want. <laughs> I have no wealth or social graces to aspire to love in such high places. And, and if I did, what chance have I? I wouldn't even dare to try. Well, miracles occur. <laughs> Maybe there's more to this than what you see. <laughs> now I'm fond of you, I've wealth and social standing. I've never given it some thoughts, madame. All I've ever sought is to honour and to serve. May almighty God preserve us from love as untowards that brings dishonour to my noble lord. <sighs> I'd never, ever contemplate a crime like this. It would be great folly and madness. I could never treat my rightful lord with such deceit. You fool! Well, I never said you should! Uh, then I misunderstood your words, <laughs> madame. They took me by surprise. Uh, I most humbly apologise. Damn that boy. <laughs> well, I know the way I'll make the stupid idiot pay. It grieves 
betrays their trust. <coughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, they often heap a huge reward on one who has betrayed his lord. <laughs> they must be fools, no doubt. Madame, what is this all about? I'm sure this can't apply to me. I'd never knowingly tolerated a traitor. Well, let me tell you straight. There is such a man. This very day, he tried to lead me all astray, <laughs> offering love. And he confessed that for ages he could not rest for love of me. But now, at last, his love he must avow. Well, I decided straight away to tell you all without delay. It must be true that his love is long-standing, because, well, it's my understanding no other woman ever caught his fancy. Now, we both must thwart this vile attack on both our honors before disgrace can come upon us. You surely know what you must do. I'll not delay. I see this through. <laughs> Look! We're alone, the two of us. <clears throat> you really make me furious. You're young and handsome, brave and strong, and yet you cheat and do me wrong. You've cheated me, yes. You've deceived your lord. To think that I believed you were a man of honesty and loyal friend, at least to me. I loved you well, I was blind. I don't know how you could find such evil treacherous thoughts in you, to tempt my wife to sleep with you, to tempt her into adultery. This was a crime against her and me, the greatest crime you could commit. Get out of here, I order you are exiled this very day. There's no appeal, be on your way. I never want to see you here. If ever you should reappear, straight to the gallows you'll be led, and hang by the neck until you're dead. How could you possibly believe a man like me could so deceive his lord? I would not dare to have such thoughts. In this affair, I have no part. This accusation is quite beyond my comprehension. All this is a monstrous lie! you say can justify your conduct. You sing beyond recall. The Duchess herself has told me all. How you approached her and what you said. To try to get her into bed, all shows. You are an adulterer. I guess you even said to her, things more horrifying still. My mistress will say what she will. All I feel is grief and pain. She's just trying to explain. You might not trust my word, but I will try all means to justify myself, my lord, and prove to you that all you said is quite untrue. Here's what may reconcile us both. I want you now to swear an oath that when I ask a simple question, you'll give a true and frank confession. Speak the truth in your reply, without deceit and tell no lie. Then I'll know if I've detected the crime of which you are suspected. <laughs> Whatever you ask, I swear I'll tell the truth and clear my name as well. You've been my friend. To all that's clear, I've Loved you dearly for many a year, right up until the present time. But what about this awful crime? Maybe it isn't really true, or that the Duchess said of you, indeed, I wouldn't entertain the thought, but how can you explain a fact that really troubles me? I loved you, but do I see you dressed with elegance and taste, all signs that somewhere you have placed your love, but who is this someone? But I look and don't see anyone. I see no woman in your life, so who can it be except my wife who claims that you have made advances? And so, my friend, what are the chances there's anyone else involved 
struck her. I view the whole affair. And so I say you have to prove there's someone else who claims your love. You <laughs> 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 must say who, without the deceit. <laughs> to tell the truth, I'll be discreet. <laughs> Don't reveal her name, I know it's you are to blame. So exile then without delay. <laughs> this is the I have to pay. <laughs> What are these tears? What does this mean? We don't believe you when I say I'll keep your secret. You can trust me with the lady's name. You must explain this. I'll just say the word. I'll never tell what I've heard. You could pluck my teeth out one by one before I speak to anyone. Oh, God. What can I do? I don't know what to say to you. Or what will become of me? I'd rather die if my mistress, she, the one who I would draw, ever heard I'd spoken. I'll not breathe a word. I swear by all I hold most dear, my love for you, the faith I bear to you in trust and loyalty, your secret will be safe with me. Nothing I might ever say would give a hint in any way. Then, I can tell you all. You see, I love your niece, uh, Madame Vergy. Uh, she loves me. We love each other. And have you ever told another? Is this secret yours alone? We never let our love be known. You've been incredibly discreet. <laughs> so, how do you arrange to meet? Since I've told you this much, I can reveal to you our secret plan. When her dog comes out alone, I know for sure she's on her own. That's how we keep our secrecy. Next time I'll keep you company. My niece won't know, but I shall test if all six places she's confessed. I, I willingly agree to this. As long as you don't keep amiss my <coughs> meeting with your niece. We planned this very night to meet. To be sure I'll not object. Indeed, I'll be most pleased if you succeed. Hidden, buried deep, 
God would be all that I possess. God, my hope and happiness. My God, I die if you revealed that secret that must be concealed. Your secret is safe. You may depend on it. <laughs> you are my dearest friend. <laughs> Madame, why did you leave the table? Are you ill? What is the trouble? I think you must have lost your mind. May God preserve me. What do I find? That youth who endeavoured to seduce your wife. That scoundrel I accused of trying to make of me his whore. You treat more honourably than before. Oh, you smile. You pray. You flatter him. You pander to his every whim. Who could stomach what I saw? I couldn't stand it anymore. Sweetheart, <laughs> listen, you must tread more carefully. The, the things you said about my friend cannot be true. What? I trust what he has said, not you. Well, the truth has all come out no, of there. Be quiet! There's nothing more to say. He's gone. <laughs> well, what is this all about? I know the way that I'll find out. through your deceit. The love you show is all a fake. You never loved me for my sake. Don't think how much I was deceived. <laughs> how is this what makes you so agree? There's something suspicious in the end. <laughs> you will not talk of this affair. Sweetheart, of what affair? This youth who lusts for me and twists the truth. I accused him, and you instead believe what this young scoundrel said. Hmm? Well, well, uh, what he said, I now don't care. What good I've always held you, dear. With you, my lord, I've always shared everything I've <coughs> seen or heard. But you won't tell me what he said. You keep your thoughts inside your head. <laughs> well, I cannot trust you anymore or love you as I did before. <laughs> Sweetheart. My love, I cannot bear your <clears throat> anger. This is quite unfair. You asked me to reveal a thing that's secret. But telling it would bring dishonour on me and great shame. Well, if that's your game, don't breathe a word. <laughs> I'll lose no sleep if you believe I cannot keep a secret. But, I have to say, when have you ever known your wife betray a secret, great or small? I've never revealed a secret. What? <laughs> 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 would I ever? <laughs> Dear wife, I'm 
in a quandary. I must trust you, yes, I agree. I shouldn't hesitate to tell you all I've heard. I know this well. <laughs> no one else must ever know what I'll recount. And apropos, if you should tell what you have heard, I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, you have my word. I couldn't even contemplate revealing what you may relate. <laughs> the Duke's love for his wife was such he trusted her. Perhaps too much. And being a bit naive, he could never believe the Duchess would reveal the secret. So he recounted everything the Duchess wanted about the knight, about his niece. He took great care to include the piece about the dog, <laughs> who gave the sign to tell the lovers all was fine. He explained he'd seen their secret meeting, their mutual joy and tender greeting. <laughs> pleasures they'd shared throughout the night, and how they parted at first light. The Duchess seemed calm at every stage, but inwardly she boiled with rage. She was furious when she heard how the humble knight preferred to take the Chatelaine as his lover, when she, the Duchess, was far above her in title, wealth, and social station. She raged at this humiliation, but nonetheless, she stayed composed and swore she never would expose the secret the Duke had just revealed. Yet, in her heart, there lay concealed the jealousy of a woman spurned, how deeply her resentment burned. To her, it was quite unexpected to find that she had been rejected. She could hardly wait to find occasion to have a little conversation with Madame Vergy. <laughs> the annual dance at Pentecost gave her the chance. As hostess, she played a proper part, but hid her malice in her heart. I am so glad to see you all. Let's now get ready for the ball. The Feast of Pentecost is right for music and dancing through the night. Let's now get ready for the men. It's time for pleasure once again. <laughs> oh, Madame Vergie, I admire your dress. It suits you well and will impress the lucky man with whom you've been. My lady, I don't know what you mean. I'm still seeking a man whose station is worthy of my situation. Oh. Well, if you haven't found a man, at least we know how well you can train your little dog <laughs> to do whatever you may want him to. Uh, my, my lady? Madame, you're very clever. I hope your affair will last forever. She only can have heard of it from him whose love I can't admit. Oh, I loved him so. Now he's betrayed the secret pact of love we made. 
How could such treachery occur unless he was in love with her? He loves my lady more than me. That's why he broke the secrecy. Oh, sweet saviour, how I loved him so. And yet I couldn't let it show. I thought of him both night and day. He was my joy in every way. My comfort, my consolation. Pleasure surpassing all expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Even when absent from my gaze, my mind would see him there always. How has this all come about? How has our secret been found out? My lover, how could you play me false? I thought you free from crafty thoughts. I thought you the truest lover ever, with no deceitfulness whatever. My love for you surpassed all bounds. How could you find the slightest grounds to hate me so? What word or act of mine could cause you to attract your love from me and love another? Have I not been a faithful lover? <clears throat> Never would I do or say a word to give our love away. What have I done that could deserve that you should speak out and, and not preserve our secret? That's what I would never do for all the world. So how could you? I made a pledge that if you died, I would die also at your side. Life without you is misery. So only death is left for me. You broke our secret, that is death. I pray now with my final breath. I pray to God in heaven above that as I have shown perfect love, he shall take pity on my soul. And as for the only one who stole my heart, yet broke it, I forgive and ask almighty God to give him honor and prosperity. He caused my death. He sets me free. My life is done, but why lament? I've tasted love. I die content.
I know who caused this tragedy. Justice has been done tonight. I, I have avenged my friend, the knight. One day my wife, the duchess, said he tried to get into her bed. I thought, this must be the truth, because he was a lusty youth, quite unattached and roaming free, proof of his culpability. <coughs> I asked him, what is your defence? He tried to prove his innocence by claiming that he was not free. He loved my niece, Madame Vergie. She loved him too. They loved each other and never ever told another. They never let their love be known. This secret stays theirs alone. They were incredibly discreet about the way they had to meet. He knew that she was on her own as soon as her dog came out alone. It was the sign the time was right to do <coughs> their pleasure through the night. I told my wife she must be wrong. He'd had a lover all along, but then the secrets all came out. Shame and dishonour brought about three deaths. Let them be buried tomorrow. The lovers together joined in sorrow. The Duchess must be buried apart. For me, I'll live with a broken heart. A wretched life is now my fate. I'll sell my land and my estate. I'll cross the mountains, cross the seas, to help the Templar knights to seize Jerusalem. God's holy city. And on my soul may God take pity. By fighting in God's holy name, I'll ease the burden of my shame. <coughs> Henceforth, I dedicate this sword to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that was a tragedy <laughs> that led to shame and misery. And all because the knight revealed what really should have been concealed. His mistress made it very plain that the love between them must remain a secret or the whole affair was over. What's the lesson here? When you're anxious to indulge in love affairs, then don't divulge to anyone the circumstances or you'll ruin all your chances. <laughs> Keep everything wrapped in secrecy. That is the way to guarantee you're safe from those who probe and pry, which makes the whole thing go awry. Well, there's no more to be said. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>